In certain areas of the northern coast of Colombia, they have a special tradition involving donkeys. Vice made a video about this, which I'll show a few excerpts from. So grab yourself something to eat and enjoy. Bueno, no es un mito, es una realidad. Eh, la mayoría de los hombres de la zona norte de Colombia eh, usualmente tienen su primera relación sexual con una burra. A los 14 años tuve yo la primera relación con, ¿Con la una burra. burra. Claro, en el desarrollo. Eh, los médicos le recomendaban burra antes. Los médicos. No. La burra lo ayuda a partir los puntos y lo ayuda a desarrollar. Oh, ya eso comen burra. Ellos todos los días la clavan. Levante la mano el que come burra, que a tú que estoy todo comen burra, véalo. We're trying to sort out here which one of these two little guys, uh, both of them are 14, have fucked more donkeys. Yo como varias. Varias mujeres. Varias burra. Burra, burra. ¿La ve? ¿Y la novia? No, no, quiero soltar todavía. No, ¿eh? Yo soy la Yuki y después que está allá. Y después de, y el se le para así. Y después ya mira. Le de a la Yuki y hago ahí. Está el tipo como tan fuerte. Me la han cagado así. No. Sí, pero yo lo hice suave. A ver, me tiré para atrás. A la, yo la hago así. Oh, my God. Y después la agarro que tú sabes que tiene el coñoncito así. La hago así y la aprieto duro. Sí, sí calientecita. Como te como ser caliente. Yo tropezado un proyecto, un cálculo, un... Yo tropezado más de 100 burras. No, muchas veces uno se concentra en mujeres, como hay veces que está únicamente en el acto concentrado que tiene una burra cogida. Now you probably find this disturbing and off-putting. So do I. And the donkeys, well they can't tell us with words what they think, but it doesn't look like they're into it. I definitely want practices like these to stop. It's concerning when people think of animals as sex objects without caring about what the animals themselves want. And look, even from a purely human-centric perspective, there are better ways to live. Now that being said, I find it a bit ironic that people condemn bestiality so strongly and say that it's wrong because the animals can't consent, while at the same time accepting forms of animal abuse that are much worse. Like, isn't it worse to make pigs suffer in CO2 gas chambers? Isn't it more egregious to pull huge numbers of fish up from the ocean, making them experience several forms of torture at once until they eventually die from asphyxiation? Isn't it more depraved to cut off the tails and beaks of farmed animals, as well as castrating them, often without anesthesia? Anyway, I went out to ask people about this. I was curious to hear their perspectives. Also, it turns out that bestiality is a pretty good way to break the ice. Sexual activity with an animal. Yeah, or nay? <laughs> like, is it ethical? Do you think it's ethical? Do you think there's an issue with it? Well, nay like a horse or nay like bad? <laughs> nay like bad. <laughs> <laughs> nay. I'm gonna go with no. Uh, <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> Why? Because they can't give consent. Mm -hmm. Let's say that I uh, trained the dog to like lick peanut butter off my genitals. No, you don't think that's okay. <laughs> You, you don't look like you're sure. You think maybe maybe you've done that before. The dog enjoys it, and that's fine. I don't understand which animal could be the, the right size, and I, I can't understand which animal you can do that with. Can which animal can? That... Wait, we don't need to get into the practical issues of like how do I find an animal that's big enough? Do you think it could hurt animals? Yeah, it, it, it could hurt animals, of course, and I think there is no way that it can be done without hurting animals, okay? It's just kind of disgusting, <laughs> I guess. Well, but I, I guess disgusting, I mean, like, I could do lots of things that disgust. Like, if I go to the toilet, someone could say that's disgusting. Um, my flatmate picks his nose. Okay. But I wouldn't say it was immoral for him to pick his nose. What if it was part of the culture? Like, let's imagine we lived in a society where it was normal to have sexual activity with, with a dog. Mm -hmm. Do you think that would would you feel differently about it then? Would you say that maybe that was ethical? If kind of everyone around you was doing it? Mm. If it was part of the society, maybe, because we would have a whole different moral code mm. of conduct, basically. Yeah. So who's to say? I suppose we can like think about cultures in other parts of the world. Like there's some cultures where they treat women really poorly, not even allowed to like drive a car, for instance. Um, and we could say, well, it's part of their culture to treat women that way. Would we say that that makes it ethical to treat women that way? No. 
if we shift the focus away from the bestiality and to like killing animals for food or like farming animals for food, do you see an ethical issue with that? Uh, that's a very tricky one as well. Yeah. You... Yes and no. Yes and no. It depends on the way you do it. Mm. Like there's a still like traditional tribes uh, living in the way they have been living for centuries mm -hmm. that they, they grow up with their kids, they kill the, the pigs themselves. It's like part, part of ingrained in the culture, I suppose. Yeah. If it was ingrained in the culture to have sex with a dog, do you think that would make it ethical? No, it wouldn't. Mm. It's like bullfighting in Spain, right? Right. It doesn't make it ethical to have fun seeing how they kill the, the right. bull. If, if it's part of the culture to, to kill animals for food, does that make it ethical to do so? Uh, I guess there's some limits Why in there. Why are you saying I guess then? You know, like just because like it's part of the deal of society, does not make it ethical? Let me give you some arguments in favor of bestiality. So like, let's say I got a lot of pleasure from it. If I really enjoyed it, would that make it ethical? I don't think that's a reason to make something ethical, you know. Mm -hmm. if people that are sadists, you don't say it's okay for them to go and like hurt someone just because it gives them pleasure. Say if we were living in a time of slavery and someone said, yeah, but it's part of the culture, would we accept that uh, as an argument in, in favor of it or would we say that, that that doesn't hold up? I feel like you have to be part of the culture in order to say whether or not it's ethical. Yeah. But as an outsider, you can't tell people what's right or wrong if it's part of their culture. I'm gonna give you another extreme example here, but like <laughs> say in a part of the world where they say do female genital mutilation. Yeah. Do you think I have the right to say, well, that causes suffering to that woman, she doesn't consent, and that's wrong? Do you think I have the right to say that, or do you think I shouldn't question their culture? I feel like you can question it, but maybe those people do want to be part of it if it's in their culture, and maybe it's just our perspective as Westerners mm -hmm. that just makes us be like, oh, so repulsed by it. Mm. But, I mean, obviously people do want to go through with it, so... It if, if, if you saw evidence that they didn't, like the woman didn't want to have... A part of her cut off and she was kind of forced into it even though it's part of the culture would you say that that, that is unethical to force someone to if you're forcing someone to do most things i say it's unethical <laughs> okay we're just having a conversation about bestiality maybe you should put some kind of restrictions in how much meat you are allowed to eat mm. sounds a bit like a communist uh, <laughs> person idea but yeah maybe it's yeah it's kind of time to start introducing these kind of measures to make sure that we don't destroy the the planet in they're busy with the vaccines now but maybe like in the future they they should put this on the, on the next rules, on the list on the mm. list <laughs> twice a week meat no more what if i was to go back to the bestiality thing if you i was to like <laughs> i don't like it if i was to um only have sex with the animal twice a week would we accept that or would we say like no you shouldn't have sex with the animal at all you don't need to but we would say it's better right it's better than seven days a week the same issue, isn't it? Yeah. Having sex with a with a minor, with a five-year-old kid, mm. doesn't make it any better if it's just two two to, two times per week. You just you it's, shouldn't do it. Okay. What about uh, harming animals for food then? Is that the same? Is that would we say like we shouldn't do it at all? Kind of the same. I mean, the less you reduce it, the better, obviously. Yeah. yeah. But I guess it's the same thing. Yeah. If there's something wrong with the processing in which the animal is killed and is uh, grown, I guess you just shouldn't do it at all. Yeah. If I was to say that it's, I should have, like, it's my personal freedom, my individual choice to do what I want. I'm like, okay, you don't, you don't do it. That's up to you, but it should be my choice to do it. What do you think of that argument? That that doesn't take into account like animal rights and things right. as well as those like two sides. They talk about, you know, you've got the perpetrator and the victim then yeah. if you're just concentrating on what the perpetrator <laughs> enjoys sure. or writes then you're discounting the i guess it isn't also going to stop people from judging you for it even if mm. it was society was in a place where it was okay that's your personal freedom but mm. again like people also under that same sort of principle have a right to react to it how they want as right. well veganism that kind of thing it's more expensive a lot of the time so mm. someone might not be able to afford um that so i think the change needs to come from above like from the like an institutional level yeah yeah if you can't afford it and it's an issue you care about then i would definitely say do it but a lot of people can't so yeah i don't think it's ethical to, to push your view on mm -hmm. on others in that way this is an interesting point because i guess someone could argue that we are kind of pushing our view onto the animal uh when we factory farm them or or, or when we kill them 
um what do you think about that <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean like maybe they like being factory no no no, no, no. <laughs> that's definitely not what i mean do you think that uh, animal suffering matters equally to human suffering or is there a difference it should be the same it should it be should the be same, same right like we shouldn't be considering ourselves as a better species than any other, just because, you know, we have the language, we can communicate in between mm. us. We don't understand how the other animals suffer, which they do. And they feel love as well and attachment mm. towards their mother and yeah. Do you think that when we when we buy animal products, are we causing animal suffering? Absolutely. Yeah. I think this is bad in our society. But if I if I see I don't know. Um, a tree boo in inside the forest that kill an animal because of sacrifice of for some god. I don't know. That would be horrible too. I yeah. I, I can yeah. I can imagine something that is, is is fine when you imagine like a, a poor animal that is killed. Yeah, I'm from a farming area, and generally speaking, they're not the most ethical places in terms of the treatment of animals i was actually a vegetarian for 18 months so mm -hmm. I, I do have like quite a strong opinion on this mm -hmm. and um yeah i i think a lot of the arguments around the consumption of meat are to do with or should be based around the fact that the animals aren't realistically treated as ethically as what something like organic or fair trade or free range on a package might actually suggest Right. If we're saying, okay, everyone should have the freedom to choose what they want and we shouldn't force other people to do what we want them to do necessarily. Someone could say, well, by supporting animal agriculture and factory farming and slaughterhouses, well, we're taking the freedom away from the animal. We're taking their lives away. We're taking their choice away and we're causing them to suffer, perhaps because we enjoy the way they taste. Mm -hmm. So if we were to really say, okay, well, we shouldn't force other people to, to, to do what we want, then should we not harm animals? Should, should, would they be included in, in that? As in, like, everyone should be vegetarian kind of thing? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> it's a tricky one, because I do eat meat. <laughs> if I go to the supermarket and I buy meat or eggs, if I saw an animal suffer, if we had to see that, would we be less likely to buy the product? There's people working in that kind of industry that that's just not stopping them to consume these kind of products, right? Mm. I think it's... It's an exercise of, you know, having a bit more empathy for the animals mm. rather than just seeing what's going on. Because to a certain degree, yeah, we have seen those images so many times in television, but it's many times that doesn't stop us. It's easy to forget. And we, I guess because we're not seeing it, because it's hidden from us, we don't really have to think about it. Yeah. We just you see, see the beautiful chicken, right? Mm. In a slice of chicken that doesn't look like a chicken. It's Absolutely. just yeah. a fillet of food. <laughs> Wait, we can find a dog. We can find a dog to lick it off. <laughs> if I was to say, I, I get a lot of pleasure from eating meat, which is true. Like I really enjoy the taste of the products. Mm -hmm. Would that make it ethical to to do so? Mm. Mm. No, I don't have an answer. <laughs> that one. I think but, but, if, but if, if consumption as much as you can. If we change it, if we change it to to the, to the bestiality, though, and I say, if I get pleasure from from having intercourse with a dog, you're like, very, like no, yeah. that doesn't make it okay, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but what about like, okay, I don't, I don't put my penis in them, but I put a knife in them instead. Yeah. When they're breeding the chickens, they only need the hens, the females, because they're the ones that lay the eggs. So the male chicks are ground up alive or suffocated in bags. So let's say that if you want to continue eating eggs for the rest of your life, um, you have to press a button. And basically we've got this, this blender in front of you and there's a, there's a chick in there, a baby chicken. And if you press the button, you can continue eating eggs. And if you don't, you, you have to stop. Would you press the button? I mean, if that's a simple no. decision, no? <laughs> no. What if I want to... Oh, when the fuck? What, what if I want to eat? Just tofu and do whatever the fuck you want with tofu. <laughs> I wouldn't press the button. Mm. I suppose what's kind of interesting is maybe that's just the decision we are making every day, right? But it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like that because we don't see the outcome. Yeah. Mm. There is a farm of dog that have to be killed is not fair. But there is, if there because was like wild dogs and why it the, would the be chicken okay, is different maybe. between dog. Yeah, it's not it's not, not good. why. 
Yeah, it's not. I, I said it's, it's not good in in both the the occasion, but we but eat that because it's you good. You eat me. Uh, you eat the. the yeah, I know. Chicken. I know because when it's food, uh, it change it changes shape, but it's but, <laughs> it's not moral how they do that. I try to be vegan a lot of time. I'm still trying. It's a little different because, like, obviously, if you look throughout the animal kingdom, they're killing each other. Yeah. There's always a prey and predator. Mm. So, like. I think we have like the teeth to eat it. <laughs> yeah. So I guess at some point it's like, oh, we should be doing this. It's like how we get iron and stuff like mm. that. And so like, I think in that sense, like maybe that justifies it a little bit because like we are omnivores, we like can choose, but also like you do have to supplement with protein and iron and things in your diet. So. Mm-hmm. And here we know. have options, but yeah. like other other areas cultures, well, cultures maybe yeah mostly yeah. rely on yeah or it's like ceremonial to have some yeah. sort of like animal killed and then you eat it with your family or something like that so mm-hmm. when we look at like nature we see like a whole load of, of animal suffering animals eating each other lions will even eat their own babies they eat their own runts i suppose someone could say like the one difference between us and them is that we perhaps have more moral agency mm-hmm. where we can have these kind of conversations about bestiality and things and, <laughs> and talk about like right and wrong and understand what like the perspective of others. Um, so like, for instance, if, if we're thinking about like eating my, my own baby and I said, and I said, I want to eat my own baby. And you said, no, don't do that. And I said, yeah, but if you look in nature, like animals eat, do it. So I think maybe it's okay for me to do it. Well, there are people that eat their own placentas when they give birth. Right. I guess so placenta, like, yeah, <laughs> but placen- placentas, <laughs> placentas, um, <laughs> I suppose, yeah. I know, it's, like, it's still like part of your, you and your child, I guess. Yeah. So it's like self cannibalism. I suppose if, if you consent to eating like your own middle ground, kind of between that. Like if you consent to, to eating your own placenta, I guess it's fine because no one's getting hurt. Yeah. I, think I don't think placentas <laughs> deserve rights. Do you think that buying the eggs, buying the the dairy, although I can see you drinking oat milk, that's cool. Yeah. Um, do, do you think buying these products is contradicting your own morals? Uh, in a way, yes, but I think it's also difficult to do the transition, right? Mm-hmm. I've been a big meat eater all my life, yeah, yeah. and I know that's a change that this is not, you know, from from night to day that Absolutely. you are going to change like that. Yeah. So I think it's a process of, you know, changing habits slowly rather than pointing to the finger of people mm-hmm. who still have those habits yes. that we should be changing. So you know, it's a slow, it's a slow process for me. Yeah. So. Absolutely, and it's like a, it's like a habit that is installed from a very young age. Our parents feed it to us, and we don't really think about it. Yeah. Like you said, we don't even think of the animals when we buy when we buy the animal products, so we don't yeah. feel like we're harming animals. I guess. Yeah. Um, so it's understandable that we eat these products, and I certainly hope you don't feel judged. <laughs> um, and no, no, yeah, no. cool. Well, it's been really good talking to you. I'll give you uh, a card of my channel on it. I definitely don't do anything to dogs unless <laughs> like I give them pleasure, like by stroking them. Yeah. That's as far as it goes. But with, which part of your <laughs> which part of your body you used to? I, I know that it sounds uh, uh, hypo- hypocritical, hypocritical for me that I eat meat and I'm not vegan so so much time. <laughs> but uh, if you think about that, it's obvious that it's not moral. Like I know how they take the the, the milk from the cows, and this is horrible. <laughs> if you have the opportunity to not eat meat, then it is unethical to eat meat. But if you are somebody who's in a situation where you can't afford alternative foods, then it's, you know, it's your only option. So you think if, if we have the opportunity to not, not eat meat and we can like do that sustainably, have, it's wrong to do it. If you have the resources, the financial means, if you have the opportunity not to partake in that part of society, then, mm. then you should do it. Do you guys agree with that? That's quite a big statement there. That kind of suggests that that kind of suggests that most of us living in the UK are unethical. I don't know. I like. I mean, I stopped eating beef like four years ago, and then I'm, I'm on this trip now, so like I'm eventually planning to become pescatarian. So, like, these are the questions I'm actually asking myself right now too. Yeah. So. I can compare that like uh, to people that sell their um, their milk that, like mama milk on eBay and they and like um, no, you in, know in, uh, wait wait um, 
people that do bodybuilding drink that. <laughs> that sounds like that to me. Like if you do a comparison that is kind of scary. Una donna. I suppose like an analogy would be that the bodybuilders want the milk, so they impregnate the mum, like take her baby away, kill the yeah, baby. Exactly. <laughs> and then and turn the milk into cheese. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. I don't think I'll ever stop eating meat. I'll just try and be as sustainable as possible. I always find sustainability an interesting one because I suppose <laughs> sustainability kind of just means we can continue doing it, right, without like dying out or Yeah. Um I suppose like I don't know, like I could perhaps going back to bestiality again, maybe I could grab that pigeon and do something <laughs> kind of weird, sustainable. I could I could perhaps sexually assault an animal sustainably. Mm -hmm. I suppose. But I suppose we would say, well, who cares? I could probably harm humans sustainably. Um, but I see what you're saying. Like in terms of the environmental argument, because yeah. uh, there's like a separation between environmental argument and then like animal suffering. Generally speaking, in like the farming around the world, it's probably worse. Like what's happening to farmed animals is probably worse than the people who put peanut butter on their gentles and let the dog lick it, which isn't me. I want to make that clear. That is not me. <laughs> what about like the difference in how we perceive dogs and like pigs and cows? Do you think that that makes sense? Like, well, people love their dogs. Loads of dogs around here. If someone was to try and kill them for food, we would say that that's probably I'm already wrong. Uh, excuse me a minute. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Not with those ones. Like, how do we decide which animals deserve to live and which don't? Yeah, because yeah, I can say pigs are really smart. Yeah. They have mm. feelings. Yeah. I do love a good BLT. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, well, I put the I peanut know. butter on my penis and the dog comes out. It's so much pleasure. <laughs> my point, that, that, I don't actually mean that. My point is, I guess, like, pleasure perhaps isn't a good, good enough reason. Mm. Um, okay, I was going to say something else, but I got distracted by the peanut butter. So I can't get it off my mind, you know? Human suffering or animal suffering? Are they equal or is human suffering more important? I would say human suffering because we have more awareness and like consciousness of like the levels of pain and like mm. the morality of what the other person is doing to right. you, I guess. But perhaps humans can suffer more like because of their intellect. Like say if I get diagnosed with cancer mm -hmm. and a dog gets diagnosed with cancer, mm -hmm. I'm gonna probably suffer more because I'm aware of it. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose there's, in some cases, maybe my intelligence makes me suffer um, less. Like if I have pain when I go for my COVID injection, mm -hmm. I'm can rationalize i can rationalize the pain because i know why i'm doing it it's for me but if i take a dog to the vet maybe they're confused I'm like what the, the hell are you doing to me so i don't know um but i see your point i do think that maybe like humans can suffer more but if the suffering was equalized let's say i have the choice between inflicting a five out of ten pain on on you and a five out of ten pain on the swan so like same amount of pain do i have a reason to choose you or, or is it equal there's no right answer for this no. Both um, are wrong. yeah I yeah think just like your intent like to do harm is what should be questioned more than like which who deserves yeah mm. like why are you doing no that way. in the first like yeah. why what is your mm. reasoning of wanting to cause harm what would you say is your reason for for wanting to continue eating animal animal products there's so much detachment from what you're eating to what was alive. Because when you see a piece of meat on a plate, you're like, that's food. Versus you look at an animal and you're like, oh, I don't want to yeah. hurt that little thing. Like, yeah. it's because a lot of the slaughtering is done so far away from us and we're so far attached from what we're doing mm. that we don't realize what we're doing quite as much. I've like fished a lot and can do that with fish. Right. I, guess, I don't know why that's I mean, easier for me. Like they look. That is interesting. Yeah. I mean, right. Less. There's well, people who don't even think fish feel pain. Yeah. Right. And crazy. I, they do. <laughs> like, why wouldn't they? They have um, like they have nerves and stuff. And nerve yeah. Endings, so. Well, I guess fish, like their face is so expressionless. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not logical. It's just in my. But, head. They, but well, we can't. We. I don't think we can see their suffering as much, it's and they like, they don't vocalize it. Yeah, the level exactly. of pain the animal yeah. can express yeah. is different. It varies, and it changes how we feel about it. I think also it's like it does take a lot of, I guess, machinery and like, I guess um I don't know what the word is, but like carbon emissions to make like tofu and like really process like meat like fake meats and stuff and so i think that is like if you could figure out a way to streamline that more mm. or like make it more efficient too because like 
the things that you're taking, like you're still growing a lot of plants, which shake up a lot of land yeah. and water. Well, like here's here's the thing: like the animals we eat are fed with crops. Yeah. So like the 57 billion land animals we we raise each year are being fed with mostly soy. Like 85 percent of soy goes to feeding animals. Um, so we'd actually use far less plants if we just set the plants directly, because yeah. there's a lot more of them than there are of us. There's only seven and a half billion of us, and they eat much much more than us. Um, but for sure, like it's going to be like there's going to be some practical issues and some rocks along the way yeah. and stuff that there's going to be problems that can arise that we're not aware of yet. But like ideally, if we could live in a world without slaughterhouse slaughterhouses, without factory farming, would you prefer that? Yeah. Yeah. If you could live a life where you're harming animals, humans, or neither, which do you think would be more in line with your own morals? This seems like kind of a loaded question. Absolutely. Like, it's a, it's, a, oh, it's incredibly loaded. I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> but you still have to answer it. <laughs> neither. Well, man, it kind of seems like obvious, right? Obviously, I'd rather harm, yeah. harm neither. Yeah. But do you think that being would being vegan be closer to that goal? Yeah. You say, you say, you say that like you're, you're kind of annoyed with it. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not really, because I'm, I'm like... Personally, I will always be eating meat, and I know that. As Why? A, because it's how I raised and it's how I live mm. my life. And I, mean, I, I, I was, I was, I guess I was. My dad's a slaughterhouse worker. Yeah. I was raised eating meat every day of my life. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I mean, I think just just because I was raised a certain way doesn't necessarily mean it's it's the best way to live. Uh, but I guess it's kind of harder to question it when when we're like in that culture. The place that I was raised in, like, there's a lot of like family ranches mm. and farms and stuff. So like, you can be part of it like you can go hunting where i live and so like you can kill the animal yourself like mm. i don't know it is like in my opinion it's about as respectful as you can get if you're still going to eat meat what yeah. if i was to go up to like a human and be like this is as respectful as i can do it if i'm going to do it this way <laughs> motherfucker and then i like, shot you in the, head, in the face yeah, it's different it's like you look into my eyes and it's like oh we're the same thing we have the same like we can think the same things we feel the same pain so it's like a different level i think like, I don't think if you kill, like, a chicken, it's mm. going to have the same thought process as, like, mm. it's going to look at you, it's going to be, like... But, like, I don't, I don't huh. think that children have the same thought process as me. Yeah. Would it be more ethical if I killed children? No. You can kill nothing, obviously, better, but if you have an animal and a human and you got to eat something, mm. the majority of people would say it's more <laughs> ethical to yeah. kill the animal. Yeah. I guess like that someone could say, I guess that's, that's not the choice we're making. We're choosing between like our pleasure, our taste pleasure right. and, and the animal's life. But anyway, I've kept you for way too long and it's freezing. <laughs> so I really appreciate the conversation. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you a card of my YouTube channel on it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>